Hey you guys, it's Amber with Omi, and I am going to show you today how to move a drawing from your iPad into Adobe Illustrator and onto your Glowforge for cutting, which seems like a lot of different steps, but I think that you'll find it's very easy after you've done it just once or twice and um, you're moving things around. So what you're going to need today for this tutorial is an iPad Pro. You are also going to need Adobe Illustrator. You're also going to need Procreate, which is an app that you can find on the App Store for about 10 bucks. And then you also need a Glowforge. Those other things are not 10 bucks, but if you have them already, you'll find this video very helpful when you're trying to move things that you've drawn into an environment where you can cut them on your Glowforge. So let's go ahead and get started here. All right, so first you're going to see the screen of my iPad, and I'm going to make myself a little smaller here so that you can see that. And this is what we're going to be drawing today. It might not look exactly like this after we're done with it because um, I'm going to draw it freehand to show you how it moves over um, to your computer and into the Adobe Illustrator. But this is what we're working with today. We're going to do a cross today. Very simple cross. Now, um, in another video soon, I'm going to do a layered type of thing where you can see how you can cut it off you can cut it out as well as engrave but today we're going to do something real simple just to kind of get you so you started with um, cutting from your drawings so you go up to gallery and we're going to go ahead and hit something new in the svg type of world it's not going to really matter what size it is so go ahead and just grab whatever you can that's easy to work with you for you um, as far as your screen size goes. Now I'm grabbing the paintbrush tool up at the top and I am going to be painting or drawing with the color black. So we're gonna go ahead and start with it. And I'm gonna do something, like I said, something very simple, which is a cross. Now you'll notice that I just kind of drew a line freehand and I held it down so that the line will go straight. The Procreate program is real nice about that so that if you've got kind of squiggly lines when you're moving along, you can kind of correct them in the time and you can actually move that up and down as well if you'd like. Don't worry about the width or the height too much. Just try to get your lines as close to um, where you want them as possible. And the reason I say where you want them is because this cross isn't meant to be something that's a perfect um, symmetrical type of um, design because you want to wear it a little bit funky and fun and if it's not as fat as you want it or as tall as you want it in the very beginning that's okay you see how I'm kind of manipulating it here and getting it where I want it ah I didn't like that so I'm gonna undo that by going to the side to this little character over here right and then redrawing that line and putting it where I want it that's probably the hardest line to draw at the end of this is to kind of get it exactly where you want it so that it's um, it's a pretty drawing and you go in here and if you don't like the way that it ended up you can go in here and erase some of these lines I didn't like how tall that one was against the other one. And you can get it to perfect by going to that eraser tool. You also want to make a little hole for your earring. And again, if you hold it, that circle will go perfect. And I do like that circle to be perfect so that our jump rings will go through it and then I can add the earring or I can add it as a charm or however I want to use it. So make sure that's a nice little round cut. Again, to show you how to do that, I drew a circle that was kind of funky, but the program made it nice and easy to work with. And you can move your pencil around so that it does what you want it to do. I'm going to undo that just to get rid of it because I don't need it. Now you've got a background layer as well as the layer for your drawing here. And if you go up to the layer section, it's these two little sections up here. You can get rid of that background before you send it. And there you still see the cross, but we're gonna share this with my computer through AirDrop. And I'm gonna show you how to, to do that in just a second. If you leave the background, that's okay. We can get rid of it in Adobe Illustrator if you need to. But what we're gonna do is go ahead and take the background away so that we don't have to deal with that white layer. 
If you go to this to your wrench in the top left corner, you're going to share it as a ping. I'm not going to do that right this second because it will reveal all of my contacts and I don't want to do that to people. But um, what we're going to do is share it as a ping. You can also email it if you need to, however you need to share it to get it to the place where your Adobe Illustrator software is. That's what we want to do here. So I'm going to pop over to Adobe Illustrator. All right, so I have shared my artwork with my computer through AirDrop. There it is, untitled artwork. And what I'm gonna do is simply drag it onto the artboard for Adobe Illustrator. I'm gonna wait a second for that to pop up. And you see here, it's a lot bigger than I want it to be. So what I'm gonna do, I'll zoom out so you can see what I'm doing. What I'm gonna do is take my shift key here and hold it down while I'm resizing so that it maintains its proportions. Hey, make it a little bigger than that. And move it into that window. And again, I'm just kind of getting it to where you guys can see it. We're gonna go up to window and go down to image trace. And in the image trace, area we're going to go to mode and change it to color the reason that we're doing that is because later on when we start working with the layers so that the glowforge knows whether to cut whether to score or whether to um, engrave those different items the we'll be able to work in different colors because the glowforge will notice things in different layers if it's in different colors. Now I know you can't see it on your screen because it's slightly below, but then you hit the button that says trace right down on the bottom and then hit OK. And it will go through its process and trace your image. And basically what it's doing right now is drawing lines around the image so that the Glowforge knows where to cut. And you'll notice when I pull it off the artboard that there's still a little white circle right here. And we need to get rid of that. So what we're gonna do is go up to Object and we're gonna go to Image Trace and tell it to expand. And what we're gonna do is create a couple of different lines of um, cut areas and get rid of those lines in those cut areas so that it doesn't give us a double cut and so that we can get rid of the white space and it doesn't try to engrave it. So let's get real close here so I can show you what I'm talking about. All right, so right now, if you put this into Glowforge, it's going to treat it as two different air is two different layers because you've got a white layer, you've got a white area here, and you've got a black area here, right? But if we get rid of that white area and we can see through it, it's going to allow us to just do one cut rather than cut and engrave or try to tell it to ignore that um, that layer or something to that effect. What we need to do though is choose this second little arrow right here so that we can get really specific in choosing this little white area and deleting it. You might have to have a, you might have to choose a couple of different um, sections with it, depending on how Illustrator recognized it, but you just get rid of all of the little white spaces. And now you, what you have is this nice little black area here that we're gonna dr drag back onto the artboard So what you'll notice here is that there, the Glowforge is actually going to cut two lines on this. And what you're going to end up with is this little tiny sliver of cross, and then you'll end up with the cross that you want as well. But we don't want that. We just want one cut line. We don't need an extra cut line here. So we're going to get rid of this second line in the middle so that we don't have two paths. And we just have this one outside line, which is really nice. So again... If you click on that inside line, you're gonna click there on the inside using this second arrow. If you can't, if you can't grab the second, um, that interior line, you're probably on that outside button. So grab your interior, your second arrow here, put it on that path, 
and delete that path. Now you just have the black cross, but oh no, where did my circle go? Well, if you move it to the side, your circle's still there, but we have the same issue with it. You're going to have an outside layer and an interior um, layer. So what we're going to do with this, what I find easiest to do is just go in and change the color of the circle first. And that way you can see what you're working with in just a second. Let's get close to it so you can see what I'm doing here. And what you're going to do is grab this interior area again and get rid of it. Okay. And again, you might have to grab a couple of them. So now what your Glowforge is going to see is a line to cut around this and a line to cut around this area. So... Grab your shift button to hold it down. I didn't want it that big, right? I didn't want the hole that big. I'm going to grab the cross and move it back behind. That circle. I always like to click on that top button now so that I can kind of move the whole thing around. And then we're going to save this as an SVG. And what your Glowforge is going to see is two different layers here because there are two different colors on this document. And we're going to save it as an SVG. Just that bottom SG, SVG on our desktop. And I had already done one of these before, so forgive me for that. And hit OK. You can leave all of the current settings where they are. All right. And now we're going to get rid of Adobe Illustrator. And what we're going to do is move into the Glowforge area here. Now what you'll do is grab your SVG and drag it into your Glowforge as you see here. I've got two layers here. One for the cross, one for the circle. When it comes in, it actually looks like an engraved file like this. And you just have to tell it to go in and cut those two lines. Okay. For ease, I had had this set up before we moved into this environment. And then what you do, I've got in here a faux piece. Well, it's a piece of, it's a um, it's cork fabric is what it is. It's super thin. So what I do is go in here and I choose the thin natural level leather setting for it. Works out really well for this. And earrings, I kind of like to make in that one and a half long area. And I want to make this guy a little bit fatter. So what I'm going to do here while you, while you choose shift to hold down your, um, your or to maintain your dimensions, your uh, proportions in Adobe Illustrator. In Glowforge, you hold shift so that you don't maintain them and you can actually make it a little fatter. And I like a little fatness to this cross. So I'm going to make it an inch and a half fat and an inch and a half long. You see your dimensions up here at the top. You can see where those are. You can see kind of here. So it's kind of, it's going to have kind of a square look to it. And then I have two ears. So I'm going to choose the whole thing, copy and paste. And I like to use as much as my material or leave as much of my material as I can. So I'm going to turn it upside down and try to use, try to keep from wasting as much material as possible. So I'm going to pop over to my Glowforge real quick and we're going to show you how it cuts don't forget to hit print
What I do with these two little pieces that were just cut is use E6000 glue and add it to a thicker piece of cork so that it keeps its body. That cork I also cut with the glow forge so you can see it here and it's about an eighth inch thick. I add that with the E600 glue. I add a jump ring. I add a earring and here's what we end up with. Something that looks like this. Now I did it with um, the cork that I cut was just green and it would be kind of like this cork that's down in the bottom here that has the glitter on it. There's also the shell that's there. These are all thinner pieces of material that I just add to the back. And then this is a glitter board that I use from Craft Closet and it comes out really neat as well. So that's how I get the things that I draw onto my Glowforge area using Adobe Illustrator. All right, so the main thing is that you don't want to have these double cut lines so that you have these little things that come out. When I did my cow um, earrings for the first time, this is what I got. So I had to go in and figure out how to get rid of those double cut lines so that it wouldn't have these um, little shapes that are cut out around the sides of it constantly. And that's the easiest way that I figured out how to do that. And if you have an easier way, please drop it into the comments section and let other people know about it. If you're looking for a glow forge, you can certainly use my referral link below and you'll get up to $250 off of your glow forge that you use, uh, that you um, choose. And I also get a little um, help for that myself. So that would be very much appreciated if you use my referral and you decide to get you a glow forge. Um, also, too, if you want any of the materials, the cork that I used, I'm going to put the links for that. Thank you so much. Um, my resolution this year is to be having is to have one of these every week to show you guys. Um, I am a beginner with Glowforge, but I've learned a ton in my first four months of having this beautiful machine that I want to share with you guys because I have certainly made a pretty good bit of my money back on it already doing earrings as well as wall hangings and um, I also did a really cool travel map with cork. I like using cork a lot on this machine so I'll be showing you lots of different ways that you can use cork and um, and do some really cool things with it. So right before I started today I found out that Betty White died Oh, rest in peace, Betty White, and thank you so much for being a friend. I watch Golden Girls every night to fall asleep. I know all of them by heart, and she was the last of the Golden Girls who um, was surviving. So uh, I appreciate Betty White and her talent and just the joy that she has brought to all of our lives. And I hope we can all live to be 99 and work until we get there like she did. Y'all have a great day.